Hi, this is Dominic, and I'm going to be showing you how to use FieldWire for common electrical workflows. So for the first workflow, pre-planning work, we're first going to look at tasks, creating just a task, what that means, what that is in FieldWire, and then how to bulk import that information, whether that's from your schedule um, that you're using in Excel, or it's from our pre-made templates that you can utilize um, to actually get your information in there a little bit quicker. And then we're just going to dive into the Gantt view at FieldWire um, and how to navigate that, how to utilize it, how to optimize it for yourself in the office so you can schedule your work, track your work, um, and make sure we are on time um, with everything that's happening in the field. So first thing we'll jump into here is the FieldWire platform on our web app. So we're going to focus primarily on the web version for this specific workflow. Um, so I first wanted to draw your attention to what you're taken to when you jump into the task section. So this project specifically has 101 tasks. So you're seeing that here. We have what we call categories associated with all these tasks. So it makes it easy for you to jump and know exactly where you're at and what you're doing um, within each of these different categories with associated work. Um, and then we have our nice Gantt view. That's our default view for you coming into the task tab. This just gives you a quick lay of the land and visualization of all the tasks on a project. But I want to jump here to the top right hand corner to give you a view of our Gantt view. When I jump into the Gantt view, what you're first gonna notice is all the alignment of our different tasks and where we're at with those different tasks. So you get to first see, hey, we have our different weeks set up. You know, right here, I'm looking at my different month view. And then as I scroll down, I actually see, you know, where, what the title of each of these tasks and those start and end dates. Now I can easily create a task and add it to this view by going up here and clicking the plus new task button. So I'm gonna quickly do that. Get in here, maybe today, you know, I want to set up an inspection for my team or I want them to perform, you know, an inspection um, out in the field. So we'll say room 405 inspection, inspection. So I can update that. And then now on the right hand side, I have what we call the attributes in FieldWire. And again, we're referencing the status to tell you if it's opened or closed. The category to say, well, what does this belong to? And for this one, we're going to call it QCQA because it is an inspection. And then I can assign it out to individuals. So everyone who's on my FieldWire project, they're going to get a list. And as they get this, as they get assigned, I'm going to use Amber here as an example, they get a notification on their phone, on their tablet, and it also shows up as a task that they are responsible for. So it shows here on the left hand side, my tasks. That's where Amber, she's going to be able to go to her tasks and see her list of activities. We'll touch on that in the second workflow today. Then I can attach it to a plan if I need to. Um, and then below that, I can start to add other elements to this as location start and end dates because this is going to get scheduled out i want to be able to track it so we'll perform the inspection today and then we'll actually have it end tomorrow um, tomorrow's date and so now i've actually put this on here and now this is going to populate and work into my camp view here so really easy to add these elements gives you a lot more ability on the trackability side and also when you're filtering and generating reports, we're gonna talk about that in this view, um, makes it a lot easier to see that information and add that data. Um, so that's as simple as it is to create a task. You know, it took me less than 30 seconds to actually create this one task. But the point of today's demonstration or um, webinar is to get you so you can take that list of activities that maybe you have um, in Excel that maybe you've been sent to from your GC and import them really quick. So you don't have to go through this one by one process. So on the electrical side, I always see it because you're having those three week schedule meetings with your GC or you're having those coordination meetings or maybe you're just working on a short project that is three months and you have all those activities um, that you created um, and you're going to upload those and import them you know, with the press of a button. So we're gonna draw and go into the import task function here. So that's this button here on the top left-hand side, right next to new task. I can go in, select import tasks. And what you're seeing here is a little bit different of a view. It is all the information I just showed you um, within the single task view. But as I'm going in here, you can notice I can actually create more line items. So this is that bulk area that allows you 
to go in and create that, um, create those tasks all at once. So as I go in here, I actually have my template set up in Excel already. Um, if any of you do want this template, all it is is you know us um, having the headers match what is in FieldWire, and then you have that information from all your different items, and then you can pre-populate with all those different attributes that I talked about earlier, such as the start and end date, you know, such as categories and who it's assigned to. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy and paste. Very simple for me to do this. So I have my line items. You don't need to have all this filled out. I just did it to give you all an example here today. And as I click paste, what you'll see here is I've actually updated with the title, all my statuses. You might've noticed a little bit of a red bar there. If you do see anything that's red, that just means that it's not an applicable um, field. So if I did you know, type in right here, maybe it's not room tracking, maybe it's just LL. It's gonna give me a default to say, hey, this doesn't exist as a category. Can you put something in that's correct? So very simple for me to correct that. The room tracking or the categories start to auto-populate as you go in here. So now that all this information is ready to go, I have my 21 items in here that I have deemed as scheduled and I've tagged them. All I have to do is click import and all 21 of these items now come in and populate into my task view and populate into this project. You'll see here on the left-hand side, um, that number will start to go up as they load in. So we always default to actually having your cascading tasks scheduled on here so you'll notice you know as the start date goes the tasks start to populate below but i do have that option if i ever needed to reorganize this and view it in a different format i do have the option to change some of those dates so if i did want to say hey i want to actually open this up i want to go back to july so i can go in here select july and then actually just window it a little bit differently and move this over into the end of september so i can go here and so what we're doing here in the top left hand corner with that date range is just giving you the true view that you want to see so we can go back and look at things we can also look ahead and look at the planning of those items so it does give you that view and then the one thing i want to draw your attention to here that i haven't done anything all i've been doing is optimizing my view but as i'm in here and wanting to start to see these items i look at rough in for 104. i know it didn't start it started a little bit earlier so actually what I'm gonna do is, or a little bit later, I'm gonna optimize what I see here. I'm gonna go in here and move it to a different start date. So this gives me that capability to actually move any of these and document with those moves, anything that's happening in the field. So here, rough in 104, I can actually click in and open that task as well. It's very dynamic here with my schedule view. And it's gonna show, you know, Dominic changed that start date. So when you're thinking about planning, thinking about Gantt, you want traceability on when things are moving, why they're moving. Um, so you have that here with that documentation piece anytime something moves. And then talked about the date range, talked about moving items. Some of you might be questioning, well, what is this on the right-hand side? So I did upload some of my items into FieldWire and they didn't have start and end dates. So what FieldWire allows you to do on the right-hand side to say, well, what are those activities that aren't scheduled? I can go in here. If I click in this rough in inspection for rough in inspection here, it does show, you know, no start and end date. So we'll go back. Just wanted to make that clear. As I click on this 103 and I drop it into here, now what I'm seeing is I'm actually adding a start and end date by just dragging and dropping it and moving it around click back into that task and you'll see start and end date is pr produced. So really easy to manipulate and move these items. Um, just remember 103, we're gonna touch on this when we go into more of the field um, view for um, Amber here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take my, my view back to my three week look ahead. Um, just wanna get a good picture of you know, what my project's gonna look like here in the coming days or in the coming week. Move that start date too. Um, 
So now I get to see just a more structured view, more di dynamic view of, hey, what's coming up on my project? So now I can actually pull this up, view what's happening, but I may want to just be a little bit smarter about how I'm viewing this and visualizing it. So now I go up to the sort task button. When I go in here, I have that option to sort by those different attributes I talked about earlier. The first one I like to show in this example is the location. So a lot of clients set up these location fields for their tasks and assign a location to those tasks. And what this allows them to do is start to look at, well, here's building one, here's every task associated with building one. What does that schedule look like? So now we can see what type of activities are gonna be on top of each other. You can even break this down into more of a room format if needed. Um, and you can see as I scroll down, it breaks it down so I can have that specific view for those specific locations. Um, but that doesn't mean you know you can't do it in other areas too. If you are you know plan pre-task planning on our plans, you can actually sort it and see you know which plans are being uh, which plans do I have things on. A lot of our plans in the electrical world are related to you know floor plans, um, and a lot of coordination happens on those floor plans with tasks. So you have that capability to say, well, I know A2.01-1, that's going to be our basement floor. Dash two is going to be our main level floor, and dash three is going to be our second floor. So you can look at and break down your activities based on that as well. A um, lot of great capabilities with the sort task option here. The last one I want to draw your attention to that's important for anyone manipulating, managing schedules, filter tasks. So I showed 123 tasks here. Um, obviously, you're going to be on projects that are going to be and have a lot more tasks than. 123 see it all the time you know every minute detail from rough in to outlets that are installed to wire cabling pull to home runs those are all going to be their each individual activities for most of you and you're going to want to have that capability to say well i only want to see in this view tasks associated with maybe someone um, a couple people here we'll choose amber we'll choose beth and we'll choose bob so now I can actually see the breakdown of just their activities and what they're doing. You might have noticed the the, um, the population of these tasks started to change as I collect those individuals. Then I can go in here and just say, well, let's sort it based on assignee. So here's all of Amber's, here's all of Beth's, and then here's all of Bob's. So really easy for you to go ahead and have that information created and collected. Um, yeah, so those are just, I showed just the assignee portion of the filtering, but just know there's a lot more capabilities when it comes to filtering. Um, you've seen the bevy of capabilities, don't wanna jump into all of them, um, but please feel free if you do have questions, write in um, if you wanna go in specific detail on some of these. That was the general overview of how to use FieldWire for pre-planning work. Please let us know if you have any questions or need any assistance. Thanks.